Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about Sony and what exactly has been going on with them in 2023 specifically but also uh, coming up in 2024 uh, and beyond honestly um, because there's been quite a strange uh, there's been quite a, a strange things happening uh there and it's been really shown uh when this year especially and i just want to talk about it see maybe we can figure out a reason as to why this is happening uh so yeah let's just get right into it now if you have a playstation you know um usually you know sony for their first party games you know that's what they sold the brand as you know um your last of us your horizons your god of wars you know uh, many other first party games you know besides nintendo they have the best output of first party games uh in the industry you know Microsoft doesn't even come close to Sony. Sony comes at least a bit closer to Nintendo, but even then Nintendo has more, but you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, Sony has the first party stuff along with third parties, but lately you've been seeing in 2023, uh, there haven't been that many first party games by Sony um, in like a while. The only two I can think of is Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is a VR spin-off thing, which I will talk about in a in a bit. But also Spider-Man 2, which don't get me wrong, that's a big release for Sony. Um, in fact, I played through Spider-Man Remastered and Spider-Man Miles Morales. Love those games. I even platinum them. I can't wait to eventually get Spider-Man 2. But that's the only game, major game, that was released for Sony this year. Um, now, when they st first started off the PS5 generation, it was actually pretty decent. They got Miles Morales, like I mentioned, uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, uh, God of War Ragnarok, um, Gran Turismo 7, I believe. Uh, we got a good amount of uh, first party games from Sony. Um, but then you start to see a little bit of a slowdown at near the end of 2022 with The Last of Us uh, Part 1 Remake, which many people think is unnecessary. Some Most people come around to it and accept that that is the best way to play the game. But even then, that doesn't mean it's not an, it wasn't necessary, you know? Like Skyward Sword, for example, on the Switch, like that... Uh, that's the best way to play Skyward Sword probably unless you're really into the motion controls because they added lots of quality of life stuff, made it 60 FPS, but it was still overpriced and the same goes for The Last of Us Remake. So, uh, yeah, so you saw that towards the end of 2022, but 2023 really proved it uh, where we're just getting... We got nothing from first party for Sony besides the Horizon VR thing and Spider-Man 2. And this is continuing towards 2024 because right away in January, we're getting the Last of Us Part 2 uh, remaster, uh, which I think is wholeheartedly not necessary. Uh, now they're adding some stuff to it to not just be, oh, it looks better, you know. They're actually adding like some stuff for like uh, like a roguelike mode or something, or survivor mode, whatever. Uh, and that's really cool that it's only like $10 to upgrade. Uh, but you, you know they're gonna sell it for like $70 individually, like um, for people that don't already have Last of Us Part II. Um, even though you can get the, just buy like a used version on the PS4 and upgrade that eventually. But you, you're already seeing this, you know, that game doesn't need a remaster at all. Uh, you see side-by-side -side comparisons and it, it doesn't look different like at all. In fact, I dare say the original looks a little bit cleaner. Um, I, I like it's just really hard to tell even the difference between them so you're seeing this already there and plus Sony not, hasn't even announced any first party games for 2024 uh, we got some stuff kind of ahead of time from either leaks or stuff that's like way in the future like uh, like Insomniac is working on a Wolverine game but that's like rumored to not even come out till 2025 uh, at the earliest. Uh, we also got a, a leaked thing about God of War Ragnarok DLC. We'll see if uh, we hear about that in like the Game Awards or something um, but like really we don't have much besides guess what Sony has been talking about lately. 
uh, live service games. And this is probably the biggest thing as to why this is all happening. You see, like around 2022 exactly, I believe, maybe even earlier, but it was, I believe it started in 2022, early of that year. Sony announced that they were gonna plan to step into live service games. Uh, in fact, they plan to like announce like 12 different ones that were gonna be released from like uh, 2024 and like 2025 or something like 12 games within like two years or something which is a crazy amount later on uh, now more recently uh, like about a month ago they announced that they're gonna cut that in half they're probably still going to release those other six life service games you know but those are be like far off in the uh, in development and we'll see those newer six games that are ready uh, for life service but yeah this is probably the biggest reason as to why there has been a lack of first party games with sony and i do want to bring up this they increase the prices for ps plus like the whole subscription thing they increased it by 20 dollars for the base model and then like you know more and more and more until we get to uh they increased it by like 60 dollars from premium uh which is a whole lot and i think that a big reason as to why um lots of people are mad about it rightfully so i think it's stupid that they raised the prices but i think the mindset that sony was going for is that because they didn't have a lot of first party releases this year and even to some extent last year they thought they weren't making enough money so they were like oh how do we make money fast uh increase the prices doom boom that's it uh we don't have the life service games ready yet so i think that's actually why they increased the prices uh they did this so they can make more money fast and that's why you also see uh things like uh the playstation portal and uh psvr2 come out within uh like this past year did the ps plus did the PS uh, VR uh, 2 come out like this year or last year? Uh, I don't remember, but it came out within like a year, you know? Uh, but like, that's why you see these accessories or these like uh, bonus stuff for the PS5 come out uh, within a short period of time, I think. It's because Sony uh, doesn't have that much first party stuff going on. Uh, they were working a whole lot on first party uh life service stuff uh like their their a teams were working on that mostly so they didn't see many new releases so they're like oh we need money quickly so we're putting out the p the playstation portal the the psvr2 uh increasing the prices you know i think that's the key that most people are not uh realizing actually um because you know you see people talk about these things about like oh like why why do we need like a PlayStation Portal, you know, it does get a Switch Lite or something, um, or just a regular Switch. Um, VR is also not very mainstream, um, and it costs more than the console itself, costs more than the PS5. And also, let's not even to talk about the fact that uh, we got a revision for the PS5, which was the PS5 Slim, uh, which just made things cheaper. Again, Sony to cut costs so that they could keep the money up because they don't have revenue from new first party games immediately like they have been um now is this to say that they're not working on on like uh single player first party games at all no i don't think that's the case uh, i think there are working on some you know i don't think like it's dead like single player games are dead from sony you know i think there is like a chance that we're getting like the last of us part three or at least a new ip from uh Naughty Dog. I know there's, there's been kind of in a limbo because of the Last of Us factions multiplayer uh, life service thing, which was rumored to be canceled, but then like uh, it was said like, oh no, we're still working on it, but how much are they working on it? Like, is it just sell for like a, a few more years? So like, what's going on with that? Of course, again, I mentioned the Wolverine game by Insomniac. Um, that's a single player game. Um, but yeah, it seems like lots of Sony's focus has been on life service stuff, which is kind of the same because life service has been actually dying out uh, a whole bunch this year. You've been seeing it a whole lot, I'm sure, with like lots of games getting removed because they failed as a life service. Heck, even 
Fortnite, the biggest life service game in the world, uh, is struggling, or at least was struggling. Uh, it had to like fire some employees, Epic, uh, and only recently because of the uh, Fortnite OG thing that it, it grew into more popularity again. Fortnite was always popular, but like you saw it was even struggling there. Um, and then Destiny 2 with Sony owns with Bungie, uh, like that's failing to some extent too and they were the ones that were like trying to see like oh uh oh this life service game works okay send it off uh let's hold off on that game you know they were the ones to like uh going over the life service stuff and e even their game is starting to fail a little bit uh and they had to de delay their dlc uh for like middle of next year i believe instead of like early 2024 uh, so yeah, you've just seen lots of struggle with life service games in general, and I don't think it's a good idea for Sony to put out, like, again, they were planning to do, like, 12 life service games within, like, two years or something. Now they put it down to six, but that's still, like, a lot, uh, and in my honest opinion, I don't think none of them are gonna work. Of course, the, what they're trying to do is, oh, if one of them, even just one of them catches us on, then that will give us a whole ton of money. You know, who cares about all the other ones? As long as one succeeds, that's more than enough. But I think they're just putting too many eggs in one basket and they're just gonna fail. And uh, yeah, the future kind of looks a bit bleak for uh, single player games from Sony. Not to say that they're done making them, but I really don't think that there's gonna be much uh, for the rest of this generation for uh, single player games, but I I could be wrong, you know, but honestly, I think that's what Sony is gonna do They're gonna focus mostly on live service with some occasional single player stuff and then uh, You'll see them doing what they have been doing which was like uh, buying exclusive rights for games like uh, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth other games that I'm not thinking of other Final Fantasy games, you know uh, like buying exclusive rights for those games uh, and then putting marketing them as like PS5 only even if they're not technically PS5 only like they come out for other consoles either at the same time or around there they're at least marketed towards like oh this is only on PS5 uh so and like you clearly see that with hardware sales being high for the PS5 you know that hasn't faltered at all it's been increasing uh very much so. So yeah, but I just think the future for single player games is kind of bleak for Sony, at least for the rest of this generation. Maybe they'll learn their lesson on the PS6 or something, or at least towards the end of the PS5, uh, which is weird to think because we're, we're already three years into this generation. But let me know, what do you think about this? Do you think this is the reason why uh, all these weird things have been happening with Sony, like the price increases, the uh, release it these a bunch of accessories or what but anyways that's gonna be it uh, thank you Damien Grace for becoming a Patreon member like subscribe please from Xenoblade and I'll catch you guys next time for more peace by the way